Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to France. We are on my, this is my little farm here in France. Uh, I'm going to take you guys around, and we're going to start a new series here tonight. This is my favorite little map. This is the Campaign of France. It is available for both console and PC, obviously PC. Uh, and we are going to um, do some small farm farming. Uh, one thing I like about this for YouTube is that uh, because the, sm the farm is so small, um, it's pretty easy to... Uh, you know, do a lot of turnover in an episode. So we're not going to have long, long episodes of me plowing or that kind of stuff. This is going to be a pretty quick cut farm because it's little. Now, our goal right now, we have a $100,000 loan. I'd like to get that paid off, and I'd like to uh, start cows as soon as possible um, so we can kind of work on both. Now, I do have everything I need for cows We've got water. We've got a trailer at the shop for uh, bringing milk. Except for one thing, I don't have a windrower. But this is about the average size of our field. So you can see here, they don't take a ton of work. Uh, and so I'll show you through the equipment here. First of all, we have our tipper. This is what we use to deliver grain. Uh, this would be a good series, too, for you guys to watch if you haven't played the game before. Because we'll cover some stuff. Now, there are some mods that I'm using. Obviously, to get some of these Massey Ferguson tractors and stuff, I'm using mods. But there are small tractors in the game, in the base game also. So, uh, this is our biggest tractor. It, it weighs in at 105 horsepower. It is a Massey Ferguson 3080. And uh, that's our big power right there. <laughs> and it has our biggest implement on there, which is the Lemkin. This is our cult culti plow. We use this to cultivate the fields before we seed. We may move over to some Cavernland equipment eventually. Maybe a slightly larger tractor as the farm grows. That's our cedar. This is what we use to spread fertilizer, uh, solid fertilizer, and also to spread uh, our lime. Here we have our tether for when we mow the grass. Let's head back and see what else we have here on the farm. This is where we keep our grain. And we do have some grain to sell, so that's good news. We'll have more money. Once I sell that stuff off. Um, back over here, we have our small tractor. We use this to deliver grain. We also use it for, it's not really small. I mean, you can see standing next to us is actually a pretty big tractor. But uh, this one runs, I think, 80 horsepower. And uh, we can use it to mow. We can also use it to ted, windrow, and even bale. Uh, but I use it mostly to cart the trailer around and do that kind of work. Here we have our Neva harvester. No, I looked for a good Massey Ferguson harvester, but I couldn't find one anywhere. So anyway, we're going to go with the Neva Ross Lamash. Pretty much a small, modern harvester. It's a nice harvester. Made in... Is Ro Ross Lamash... I don't know if it's Russian or not. Somebody will correct me on that. I th Maybe Czech Republic? I don't know. We have our typical sprayer. This is what I use for all my small farms. <laughs> um, and... Last but not least, we have a baler for making our little bales. Now, before the series started, I painstakingly stacked these bales in here. And we will add some grass bales, too, once we get some cows. But I have the feeling that cows are going to eat all of our grass pretty much right away. So, uh, not grass, but uh, hey. Here's our storage container. Uh, this is the Replenish mod. It is available on console and PC. Once again, it's called Replenish. So if you do a search for a replen or REP, you should bring it up. Uh, it is available on their website, too. Here we have the... I believe this is pigs. No, this is sheep. And we may get some sheep, too, because sheep are easy. Um, but we have everything, like I said, except for the wind rower, we have everything for the cows. So here is our cow pen. And we're going to go ahead and pick up a couple cows, hopefully before the episode's over today. So I'm going to get to work here. Um, we're going to clean up this tractor and repair it because it's been pretty beat down. So we're going to uh, repair the tractor. And we're going to tab, and we're also going to repair our... Now, I have a, a mod called the Workshop Tabber. It allows you to tab between equipment, and it's very helpful. Uh, where's my washer, though? I don't... Hang on a sec. I never bought one. We're going to buy a washer right now. See if I can zoom in a little bit. 
Put it right about here. There we go. So that's 5000 bucks, but it's going to be worth it. Now, you don't have to clean your equipment. I get asked all the time. Do you have to clean the equipment? No. You can leave it dirty if you want. I just like to clean it because I'm. that's the way that I am. I'm not great at cleaning things, but I like to have them clean. All right, so first things first. Uh, we're going to get some seed on our field, and then we are going to... Um, because I didn't, I forgot, we have to seed these fields. What what should I grow? Let's see what we have in our bin. Well, we're probably going to need more straw. So let's grow some wheat. Uh, we have seed in here. We have bar Okay, we are growing barley. Uh, we'll just grow more barley. That's fine. Two more fields of barley. We're not doing horses. And we may even decide to sell the bales. We don't have to necessarily keep them. Um, let's go ahead and get this planter started. Oops, wrong button. So once again, we're dealing with very small equipment on this farm, and I like that. It's kind of like the toy equipment of the, of the farm sim world. You know what? Going, that thing was riding up the ridge. The cedar's riding up the ridge, and it wasn't seeding. So we got to kind of watch that along this one. Don't get too close to the edge. Like that. Wow. Interesting. Did it get there? Yeah, it did. All right. And so once we get the barley down, the seed, then we'll come back and fertilize, and that'll take like one or two passes. It goes so fast. I haven't had any weeds on this map yet, but I'm sure they'll pop up at some point. So we have several fields on this farm. Um, this is probably, honestly, between this field and that field, these are our biggest fields, uh, except for 47, which is grass. And we want that one to be kind of large because it's going to just be producing grass. And I might actually turn a couple of the other fields into grass fields, too, because if we're going to support cows, we're going to need a lot of grass. We're going to need hay. Actually, we just need hay. We're not going to do a full-on uh, TMR setup, so we're just going to be doing grass. Uh, whoop. Oh, yeah, did I unload the cedar? Oops. Somehow I unloaded my cedar. Oops. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'll catch you when I'm finished with this field. I'll be back in a moment. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got, I've got six fields total. I think... One, two, and three are going to remain crop fields. Four, six... And 47 are going to end up being uh, my grass fields. I think right now there's crop growing on 6 and 4, but we'll check once we get back there. Uh, it might be 4 that was harvested, so we'll have to switch that over to grass. We'll see when we get back there. But we're done here, so we'll head back there next. Now, oops, that's the end of the field. You guys will, should recognize this farm because I used this for one of my, I think my second tutorial I did for taking care of your crops. So you should, this should be familiar to you. And I've changed some of the equipment that I was using, but in general, this is pretty much the same stuff that I had. So these will be our crop fields. And of course, number one, which is going to be just back here. One and four are access to the back of the farm. Let's take a look at that. There's field number one. Yeah, and there's stuff growing. That's a crop field, so it's good. That's actually a crop already. 
He wants a bunch of crap. It's barley. So we're going to more barley. We have a butt ton of barley. Barley, any barley. Okay, so then number four is here, and I'm going to run over and see what's going on over here. This looks like canola. Needs lime. So once this is done, I'll have to lime the field. So this field's going to be grass. And this field's going to be grass. And then I'll rotate wheat, oats, and barley. Um, uh, I need to change the seed. Nope, that was dumping the seed out. Dang it. I can never remember the right button to change seed. It's just Y, I think. Nope, it's not Y. It's not... Oh, my God. Arthur! There we go. Oat. And we want soybean, oilseed radish, grass. There we go. So we're going to plant grass back here, and we're going to leave this grass. Once again, small fields, easy maintenance. Everything's done very quickly on the small farm, which I like. You'll see here I limed my field and gave the neighbor a little free liming too. They're not complaining for the free materials. The funny thing about the limer is it goes through it in about two passes, but it can also sp spread the entire field in one pass. So, uh, except for field number four, which is already grass. Which, so, once the, once these fields, for those of you that are new to the game, once these fields are limed, you don't have to lime them again. That's if you're planting grass. Now, if you're planting other crops, every three crops, I believe, you have to relime. But. Le Petit Ferme. But once again, one of the things I love about this farm is it's super fast and easy. It's just little. And um, you just, you, you can um, kind of do a whole field in about five minutes. So if you're new to the game or you have a short attention span, like moi, you can get a lot more done. <laughs> but it's in little spurts. So you're not going to make a ton of money. That's the only downside with this farm. You're... It's not, it's going to be a slow earning farm, uh, and we have a big debt to pay off. So hopefully we'll be able to overcome our expenses. The only expense, like I said, though, that we have left, uh, we have our loan, we need a windrower, and we need to buy the animals. So this tractor even acts as a front loader, so we can kind of mix and mosh and one of the things about those small European farms is they do like to use equipment for everything so you try to get as much as you can out of a piece of equipment I may eventually switch my planter over to a Cavernland planter that has some sort of cultivation but we have that new uh, Cavernland <coughs> dealership uh, that just came out in a <coughs> DL sealership uh, and so I'm trying to find a way to incorporate that into this farm. Uh, but I see they have a cool plow. However, most of the equipment in that pack require larger tractors. These these are very small tractors. so uh, There isn't a whole lot of equipment out there available except for through mods. Now, the nice thing about this, though, is once again, that culti plow kind of takes care of it for us. So All right, so we've almost finished this field with grass. So, uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome to the YouTube. And uh, you'll notice that I did, for a couple years, I did Twitch. Um, and I am moving away from that. Now, I want to say for those of you that have been Twitch followers, I am going to continue doing specials. Uh, when a new DLC comes out or a new game, we'll cover it on Twitch. Um, also, I think we'll probably still do maybe one one stream a week. I'm not sure. I think it's going to be Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we're going to do a stream um, with some sort of uh, multiplayer. feel like the, the farm that JC and Taylor and I are doing, we'll do something like that. So all is not over with for Twitch, but we are uh, really reducing the amount of stuff I do on Twitch just because life is busy. And I, I just don't have time to be you know screwing around trying to make Twitch work and... Uh, also living my life i 
I got tired of having to be on schedule all the time and entertaining, and I'm just, that's not who I am. And it was taken away from me and my family, and I just, I don't want it anymore. I really don't. I don't want to feel that pressure. YouTube gaming should be fun. You know, and I really enjoy, always have enjoyed doing YouTube. I, I really never loved streaming. But I understand why people like it. I, I know it's a way to connect with my viewers, and that part I will miss. Um, but this is what I want to do. And this is where I'm having fun. So let's go ahead and clean this off. This is our Amazon Cedar. Once again, small equipment for the small farm. Look how, and even with the small equipment, look how fast we got two fields seeded in what? About 10 minutes? So let's go ahead and pop this away. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to get out there and we need to fertilize our field. So we're going to put some solid fertilizer down or fertilize our fields, plural. Now, with the grass, once you've mown it, mown it, once you mowed it, um, you don't have to fertilize again. However, uh, the first time you grow it, you do need to fertilize twice. Uh, because it fertilize, once the mowing cons it considers mowing a fertilization stage because it'll cause the grass to grow. But for this first time, we're going to put some fertilizer down. And then we'll take our crops and start selling them so that we have a little bit of money uh, to buy the stuff that we need for the cows and maybe even buy a couple cows. I really want to kind of watch and keep my loan from going any higher. You can see here the spread will actually, I did this wrong. I could have done the whole field in one pass. I screwed up, though. That's okay, though. We got plenty of fertilizer to go around. This tree alley is really f funky when you're trying to get... Uh, I don't know how we're going to fit the harvester back here. Jeez. Should have thought about that. Maybe I'll switch the grass fields around and make this all grass. We'll see how we do when we get the harvester back there. So, like, I think if we do this right, we should be able to get the whole field in one pass. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, yeah, pretty much. Come on, go straight down the middle. Arg. <laughs> Dang it. Oop, sorry about your bushes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Broke my uh, trailer hitch. Okay, so we're done fertilizing <laughs> that. Voila! Fertilizing in two seconds or less. It's like my neighbors. My neighbors get their lawn sprayed, you know, and the truck comes and it's here for like 20 seconds and then they're out of here. I'm like, man. <laughs> it, it works, though. His grass looks amazing. I'm sure they probably pay, I think it's thousands of dollars, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's at least hundreds of dollars, but I think it might be thousands of dollars. I mean, they literally show up. Chemlon shows up and they spray for like a minute and then they're gone and they only do it like once every two or three months like they almost never do it but what a racket you know but it works the chemical works it it kills off all his weeds and it makes the grass look beautiful so it's probably killing all the local you know wildlife too but but his grass looks good all right so here we go there's that so now we're going to grab our little tractor and get our wagon. And we need to start selling off some of this excess crop that we have. I like this tractor. It's not a vintage tractor. It's probably, I don't know, what would you guys say, like 1980s? Maybe even like early 90s. It's not that old of a tractor. And for some reason, it says Oozle on the side. Oozel? Oozle? Oozle? But anyway, it is not it is not a vintage tractor per se, but it, I would imagine probably built in the 1980s at the 
late at the or at the earliest. Yeah, there's a lot of barley. I don't think we're gonna be able to fit it all. Shoot, maybe we need a bigger tipper. Well, let's see where this is going. Um, Lart du Pain. The good news about Lart du Pain is it is just down the street. So basically, bread art? Is that what that means? Lart du Pain. Or art of bread. Anyway, it's the local bread store. Once again, one of the reasons why it's a little teeny map, one of the reasons why I love this map, doesn't this just look like Europe? I mean, it just, it's so detailed. It's like just little and cute. Uh, the thing I don't like about some of the larger maps, like I, my complaint with like the 2X, map, or the 4X and 8X and 16X maps is that they don't capture this kind of like neighborhood. Now, Sandy Bay does. Sandy Bay is what, 2X, maybe 4X? Maybe it's 1x, I don't know. But they just, this map has a, it's oozing with character. Because every little inch of it has got some character to it. And it's done properly. There's no, like, over, it, <laughs> it's all good textures. Everything is, you know, well put together. I don't know. I'm just, as you guys know, I am ridiculously picky when it comes to mods and maps. And this one just does it for me. It's well done. There's nothing out of place. There's nothing overused. And we shall continue to sell our bread there for our barley. Yeah, I think the two shops are near. It's all pretty near us. There's nothing that's ridiculously far away. So if we crash the price on one place, we can go to the other. If we do this fast, we shouldn't have a problem. <laughs> might, I think I might renew, need to rethink this tipper idea, though. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. I'll tell you what, this kind of looks like England, too, a little bit. Uh, cars are obviously on the other side of the road, but this reminds me of like towns like Loftus or um, Mask. Like it just it has a uh, a very small town feel even for like England. Uh, Moni and I went to the Lakes District, uh, and uh, it looked a lot like this. There were some towns that looked like this. The hills in the background, little churches everywhere. Oh, shh! Bad driving. We're not making much money. Uh, Twenty. So about we made about five thousand so far. Maybe just over five thousand. Yikes. Well, it still will help pay off that uh, or pay for our uh, our cows and our. Our wind rower. Now the wind rower is ten thousand bucks, so it's not crazy expensive. But by the time we sell off all these crops, we should have some decent money. I'm hoping about thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars, and we can get the wind rower. And then we can also, you know, well, I don't want to buy the animals yet because we don't have food for them until we have all the fields grassed over. We can get the cows because we'll be able to feed them grass or hay in the next day or two, but the sheep are going to be a while. I don't even know if sheep will be worth it because we have such a small farm that unless, because, you know, sheep, if you get like 100 sheep, it's worth it because then you get the bales. But if we buy like 20 sheep, it's going to take us like a month to get any kind of production out of them. Like, oh, there's a bale finally after two months. We finally got one, one pallet of wool. Okay, well, 
All right, I'm going to keep delivering these products, and uh, we'll see how much money we have when we're done. I'll catch you on the flip side. So now I'm selling the oats, and of course it's at Le Cooperative Agricole. And so I'm going to be traveling um, all the way across the map. <laughs> to, the, to the map. <sighs> what are you going to do? Well, I guess it gives, gives you guys, you can ride along with me, kind of see what the whole map looks like as we go through these little areas here. But like I said, I, I, I do love this map. It's not very big. Uh, you can obviously expand and very easily because the fields are like a couple thousand dollars each. But, you know, there's just not a ton to the map, but it has it's all compact and I like it. There's some really nice details. Uh, maybe we'll catch a train. There's a really cool train that goes through town. Um, I haven't seen it on any other maps. I'm sure it is. It is, but you know these guys. You know, these guys all recycle maps. But uh, there's a sawmill there for cutting trees. You know everything's here. Later on, in, when we play, we'll we'll go into town, but uh, and get the uh, go to the shop. We're near the shop now, but here is. Agricole. We can go in here. I think I might have entered through the exit. Oops. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, the arrows are showing like go here, go there. Don't go the way that you just came. Oops. Now we're going to plummet the market because. Um, it was already on its way down. Let's see if by the time we get home and get filled up again, I think we're going to have to come back one more time. But once again, as you can see, this map is just, you know, simplistic. And yet it has a, just all this character to it. Uh, it reminds me of, I forget what that map that was, uh, Carp and Mr. Mike and I used to play on it, and I can't remember the name of the farm. It was another, like, half X card like a micro farm, and I, I just can't remember the name of the, the map, but it was a decent one. Um, but I liked it for the same reason I like this, just the simplicity. Anyway, all right, I'm going to grab another load of oats. If I see the train, I'll cut you back in. Please be a train. Please be train. Please. Please come train. No train. Please train come. Ah. No train. <laughs> train yes yes train please please <laughs> i'm trying to try i would like the train now see it does say enter there though and it says don't enter there so maybe hang on let's pay attention to the signs here uh no it points us to any of those So we're right to go this way. I don't know. It's weird. Got one more load of oats to go. Now I've set my cruise control to 16 miles an hour on this tractor, and it feels just about... There's the train. Isn't that cool? That's probably from some other map and some other author, but... I'm glad we got to see at least a glimpse of it. We will see more of it as we get... Um, going on this farm. But it is a cool train. I, I really, once again, I'm just, I, uh, this will be the last time I say this, but these are the kind of maps that I wish map makers would do more often. They've got so much character, and it doesn't have to be a huge, giant map. Now, obviously, if you like bigger fields and stuff, you could go a little bit bigger, but this just has so much the detail look at look at this roundabout look at the look at the uh like the bricks in the center and stuff like that like it just you know to the custom train to the you know the rolling hills and the care of the landscape the villages off in the distance with the church spire sticking up i mean it just it's all it's all atmosphere that brings us into the game and makes us feel like we're really playing on a farm and you know even you can have big maps like this now, but it's hard. To, I know it's hard to do 
But we do have several good examples. I mean, obviously, Sandy Bay uh, and um, Marwell Manor is great. Uh, I'm really enjoying the new American map, the uh, Stone Stonegate, Stonewall. I can't remember what it's called. It, uh, Stone Valley or something like that. Uh, the X2 version of the map is really, really nice. The 2X or 2X version. Um, so they're just they're coming out, but it's it does seem like they're few and far between where this this amount of care is taken. Now Roll Mishawo, which is a map that I was doing a series on on Twitch. Uh, that map, another good example of just a really good quality map. Um, small, but a lot of detail. Um, it just it makes you feel like you're at home. There's something homey and, and, and f very real farm-like about this that it just kind of draws you in. And that is what I look for when I look for a map. And this map just has that. Even though it's small, it has, it has all the mojo to be like a real place in Europe or a real place in America. So... Anyway, I'm done talking about how cute the map is. But uh, anyway, I will see you guys uh, once I'm done delivering the rest of the goods. I promise I won't make you watch anymore uh, unless I see the train. <laughs> well, I missed the train again. All right, so when we get home this time, I'm going to take a look at my tipper and see if we can't order some upgrade plates to make it carry just a little bit more. I'd like to be able to double or at least third more my capacity because it is a little tedious to have to make seven trips now the one thing i do like about this trailer or this tipper i can put it into a bale mode where this the one side is down and since i'm hand picking up the small bales and loading them on here uh, it does make my life a little bit easier to have three sides because i can push the bale against that back side and not worry about it falling off the other side where most of the the in-game bale carts uh they have it open on both sides so you end up knocking bales out of the cart but this one's nice because you don't do that so uh, i'm i'm really enjoying this cart i don't want to mess it up but i also do need a little bit more capacity if i can if not we may have to look at buying a bigger tipper and, and that's all going to cost money which i don't really want to spend but or i could just keep delivering it i don't think we're going to get much more but if we do a whole crop of stuff before we deliver like Let's say I do two or three fields. We could have two or three tippers full. So, you know, I think two fields will yield one tipper. We'll see. But first of all, let's go to the shop and see if we can't upgrade this. And we're a tab. Let's customize this trailer. Oh, we can. Look at that. The price is not that bad. Look at this. But this is the, the the way that I like it. This is very easy. Um, so this is nice. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, we can put a... What do you think? Should we put a cover on it? I like that. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll put we'll have it in this mode. But the nice thing is it's, a mo it's once again, it's a modular trailer. So we can take those pieces off and make it a bale trailer when we need it. So Now, we still don't have a huge capacity, but we should be able to make a little bit less trips to the different locations like this. We should be able to get almost all this canola in here. And the rest we can leave. Not a big deal. If there's just a little bit left, it's not a huge deal. Nope, that's all of it. So let's go ahead and see where the canola is selling at the most high price. Uh, Cooperative Agricole, which is back where we were going before. <laughs> all right, so it's a long trip, but I'll make it. Okay, guys, so I'll see you. Once I'm done delivering this, I'm going to take it over to the Cooperative Agricole. And I will see you, or Agricole Cooperative. <laughs> Bonjour. Uh, I'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> we need a good screenshot. Maybe this will do. Ta-da, out in the sun. Yay, look at that. Great screenshot right there. Boop. Hey, it's the train. Train. Toot toot. <laughs> it's the simple things in life. Now, I really like, and you can see here with the afternoon sunlight coming down through the trees, something about this alleyway, or not alleyway, but like this passageway, I really like the way that this looks. It's, it's very um, atmospheric right here in this section. I really like that. All right, so we have sold off, or are selling off our canola. We still have several crops left to sell. Uh, I feel like today... 
or tomorrow we'll be able to afford our cows, though. This is not too bad. And since we only have a $100,000 loan out, I don't think our loan payments are going to be too, too bad. Uh, but I'm hoping that that will do it for us. Uh, uh, I'm going to continue to sell these crops in the next episode. So I'm going to say good night to you guys. We're just a little bit over half an hour, and that's what we're going to be with for these episodes. Have a great night. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Looking forward to this new series. And uh, really liking this. Like I said, this is going to be cool. It's fun. It's small. And I think we need that for YouTube. I, I'm looking for a map that's just easy to do and I can sink my teeth into without getting crazy. So uh, anyway, have a good night, guys. And I will see you next time. Bonjour. A bonsoir. And we will see you guys again on Massey Ferguson Farm. Le Petit Ferme, also known as Campaign of France. Bye.